Statistics and Excel. Height, statistical inference, data, Excel, practice, problem. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. So you can just open a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can focus on the heart of the practice problem, blank tab only having the data so we can practice formatting the cells in Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to see where we are headed, noting that we have the data on the left-hand side related to heights in inches. Pretty long data set that we will be working with. We are imagining that this is the complete population of our data. We'll take some stats on it, like the average and the median. We'll make a histogram from the entire data set, and then we'll take samples of that data set. So we kind of already know the answer of the entire population we are looking at, and now we want to think about how close samples will get us to be able to make an inference about what the actual numbers are in the data set. All right, let's get into it. Let's get stuck in by going to the blank tab, noting that if you don't have uh, some of the data sets, then you could try pulling data sets to practice with from Coggle, K-A-G-G-L-E dot com. It's a good resource in my opinion. So we have our information on the left-hand side. Let's first sort our entire worksheet, which is what I do typically every time, noting that the data set is basically has multiple decimals. So we have a question of how many decimals out do we want to take the data as we reference our cells? I'm going to scroll in a bit, and then I'm going to select the entire sheet, putting my cursor on the triangle, right-clicking on the sheet, and let's format the cells. I usually go to currency, negative numbers, bracketed, and red, dollar sign gone, and I'll keep the two decimals, which will actually lower the amount of decimals. So re remember, the data sets are a little bit longer than two but I think that will work for us. Two decimals, there we have it. I'm also, before I unhighlight, going to the Home tab, Font Group. Let's make the whole thing bold as well. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I, I would like to put this into a table, but I also want to be able to kind of randomly mix up this data set. So remember the goal here is to think of this as the entire data set, and then we're going to imagine that we're going to be taking samples from that. So let's first just get an idea of the entire data set itself. So I'm going to put a table into this, go into the to the home tab, I'm sorry, insert tab, and then the tables group. Let's make a table out of it. So that should select the entire data set because there's no missing cells in here. This is a pretty extensively long data set, whole lot of numbers if here if I go down to the bottom of this thing we're down to you know 25,000 numbers in it so let's was that right it's uh yeah so let's go ahead and say okay now we've got a table within it i could then sort the data i can see it from lowest to highest or uh highest to lowest uh in inches so if you want to convert this clearly to feet 
then you know you'd have to do a conversion divided by 12 and so on to get uh defeat but the general idea is there it is now if i imagine this as my entire data set then i would use our calculations we saw before i can make a histogram of this and i can do my calculations of the average and the median and so on let's let's first make a skinny b here i'm going to put my cursor in b and put it in between and make it skinny and let's do our normal statistical calculations let's take the average or mean and i can use my average function to do that equals the average brackets and i'm going to put my cursor on the drop down and select the entire data boom there's that this one by the way i might want to make this a little bit thinner and notice i it i might want to wrap the text up top so home tab alignment wrapping the text and then maybe i'll put a space i double click in here put a space so that it puts the space there i might want to center it home tab alignment and center okay so there's the average then we might take something like the median using my trusty median function we've seen in the past i'm gonna do this fairly quick median double clicking on this and selecting the whole data set that's picking the one in the middle we might want the max so let's do that one equals the max these are my standard give me the top value and then we might want the min give me the bottom value equals the min we can also take the quartiles but i'll stop here there's the min value all right i'm going to make this blue and bordered which is my typical kind of formatting for the data input areas home tab font group drop down on the bucket if you don't have this blue i find that by going to the more colors you can use a different blue by the way but i like to use this blue right there it's a nice pleasant blue and then i'm going to put some brackets around it home tab font group drop down borders we want all borders so there are our borders now we can take this and enter a histogram from it selecting the entire data set and we're going to go to the insert and then charts and drop down on the histogram i'm just going to insert the histogram boom and it just does it for us and we get this nice bell-shaped kind of looking histogram now when we're looking at different sets of data we're not always going to get you know a shape that looks like this but certain sets of data many sets of datas will so when we're talking about natural things oftentimes and we're trying to measure the midpoint and how dispersed things are from it such as height such as weight and those kind of things then oftentimes we do get like a distribution like this and we'll lead and then we'll get into remember that if i see a distribution where i can think of you know a curve related to it that could be useful if i can come up with a function of the curve because then you have a mathematical calculation of it we'll talk about that later uh but for right now the idea all we want to do is say is get the idea well this is the entire population we are imagining this is the entire population so now let's imagine that from this population of data this entire population we take samples of it let's imagine that we could not get the entire population but rather could only get samples and see how close those samples will get us to the actual number now clearly in real life we wouldn't have the entire population we wouldn't know the real number that's the point but obviously if we can test a situation where we know the actual number these are the actual numbers of the entire population and then we can do our inference testing taking a sample and then see how close it gets us to the average then we're testing the process that we can then possibly use in other situations where we don't know the answer to the entire population but we can use our statistical tools to, to try to get an idea of where the middle might be and how confident we could be of it all right so what i'm going to do then is I, i'd like to be able to scramble this data so that i can come up with like a, a random sample so the question would be then to be coming from how do we get a random sample now in practice of course you can ra somehow randomly choose the population of of people of people that has its own problems in real life because we have to figure out how how exactly are we going to do that if you're just working with the number statistically then the question is well here's my population how could i get a random sample of this 
Now, uh, we do, we've got that random number generator that we could use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire thing and I'm going to put that over here and I'm going to paste it just one, two, three, meaning just the values. So I've got all the values. They've been sorted, but all the values are there. And then I'm going to put next to it my random, uh, random number generator. I'll just call it rand. And then I'm going to then create my, my random numbers over here. So I can make a random number generator by saying equals R-A-N-D. So there's our random number. And I'm just going to hit enter. It usually puts it in as a decimal. If I go to the home tab, numbers, and add the decimals, it's a very long decimal number. And then I can populate this all the way down to, to match the height data. So I have a random number. If I double click on the fill handle, let me do that again, control Z. I could like put my cursor here and drag it down, but the easiest way to get it down because it's right next to this other set of data is to put your cursor on that little fill handle right there and then double click on it. And that should take it all the way down to that, to that bottom point of these numbers. So then I'm gonna enter a table around this to kind of connect these two things, go into the insert tab up top, and we'll go to the tables and I'm gonna insert a table. So now it should select the entire table because, because there's no empty cells. So hopefully that picked up the whole thing. I could see the endpoint being at that 25001. So I'm gonna say, okay, there it is. I'll make this one, I'll double, I'll make this a little smaller again, dragging that in. I'm gonna wrap the text on, on these header cells, home tab, uh, home tab, alignment, wrapping the text. I'm going to center them, and there we have it. So now these are kind of connected together. So now if I want a random selection, I can sort by the random numbers. These are all random numbers. So every time I click on them, they reshuffle. So if I sort by the random numbers, it's going to give us a, a, a random sorting to the numbers to the right. Now the problem here, of course, is that every time I do something, it shuffles again. So what I'm gonna have to do is get a static num random number over here. So now I can just simply uh, copy these. I can take these two if I, if, and I can, that's my random number generator. And now I can paste them right here. I'm gonna paste them one, two, three though, right clicking, pasting one, two, three because I don't, I don't want the actual random function to show up. And then if I want to include, include the formatting, I could actually right click and insert the formatting as well. But what I'd rather do is just make another table out of it. I could put the formatting on it like this. And so then I've got, I've got it nice and formatted, but I don't really need that second step because I'm gonna add the table. So I'm just gonna click in it, go to insert, uh, tables and add the table again and so boom so now we've got a random number generator that's not going to shuffle around all the time it's actually a very long number i can sort by the random numbers and that should give us kind of a random selection of the numbers on the right and i can select just how many of the sample that i want by by picking however long of a sample i want to be looking at let's start with a simple sample of 10 Later, we will get into concepts of how large does the sample need to be to provide a certain level of confidence. But for right now, let's just get the idea of picking the random sample and using our tools in Excel to simulate those random samples. So we have shuffled the items. We're gonna say if I just pick the first 10 now, that is gonna be our random sample. We are currently in row number two, so I can go from two down to 11 and that'll be 10 items. So I'm just gonna put my cursor on P2, select down to uh, P11, right click and copy, or you can say Control C, right click and copy. I'm gonna put that over in S2 here, right click, and I'm not gonna paste them normal because I don't want the formatting, instead pasting one, two, three. And then I'll just label it maybe sample up top. So, so now if I just look at these numbers and to see whether or not they are representative, remember that the actual numbers were here. So there's the average, the mean, the median. If I, 
uh, represent that data down below just so we can see it kind of side by side. I'll put it down here somewhere in uh, S17. I'm just going to say equals. I'm going to scroll to the left to find that table. And I'm just going to recreate uh, that table. I'm going to put my cursor in the average. Enter. And now I'm going to put my cursor in the cell and copy it to the right. And it should pull in the relative reference to the right. So there's the average, and then I'm gonna copy it down, and it should give us the relative numbers down. So here's that middle point that we usually refer to on the average, uh, 67.99. The numbers we picked up, 68, like you can take the difference between the two, you could say the average is that. So the difference, so the average, so the diff, difference or ch is going to be equal to this minus this right and then the average is the same all the way down so i can copy that all the way down say there's my average and each point on the average different there's the difference on each point from the average notice that some are over and some are under that's kind of what we would expect if we did just a random sample on the averages and the tendency, of course, the idea would be that we, we start to go towards the middle by doing the random uh, samples of, of, of them, right? And if I, took, if I took the average of all the ones we took, the average of the sample, I can say this is going to be the average of the 10 that we pulled out. And we get something, we get the uh, 6801 which you know is pretty close in this case to the average now notice 10 out of this whole population is a fairly small you know number so we, so we could we could run larger numbers unless and we want to do this for a couple different reasons obviously a larger sample uh could give us more confidence which we'll talk more about technically later but also we just want to kind of practice how we can use our statistical uh tools in excel uh to to, to say well what if i wanted to kind of simulate the the idea that i ran uh that i ran 10 10 tests of 10 tests of 100 so now we can up we can up it a lot how can i do that kind of easily in excel there's different techniques i'm going to make this one a little bit skinnier i'll make this skinnier i'm going to put my formatting format by selecting all of this and go to the home tab font group borders I'll make them blue. That's just my normal thing. And I'll do the same down. Let's pull these. I'm going to highlight these and cut them. Right click and cut instead of copy. And then right click and paste. That just moves them to the right so that I can see the average or mean. And then home tab, font group, brackets, and blue on that. All right. So, so. Let's also make a skinny V. So one technique I could use, I could say, well, let me just copy the entire thing that has my random generator over here. And then, and I'll copy it over 10 times. And then I'll randomly generate 10 sets of numbers. And then I'll go through and I'll, I'll pick up and I'll, I'll cut off like the extra numbers. So let me show what, what I mean. What I'm trying to get at is to make 100 uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to make 10 tests of 100. So I can take, this is my random generator of the entire population. Let me copy those two. I'm going to copy L to M and then just simply right click and copy. And then I'm, I'm just going to paste it as they are 10 times. So I'm going to put my cursor on, on W, right click and paste. Uh, uh, hold on a sec. I copied again. <laughs> Let me do it again. Copy these two and then put my cursor right click and paste just normal pasting. And then I'm going to do that 10 times. There's one. I'm going to do it on Z control V or paste. There's two over here. Control V or paste. I'm going to use the clicks uh, Two control V three control V four control V five. Control V6, Control V7, Control V8, Control V9, and Control V10. 
So now we've got our data. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make uh, all of the center points smaller. So I've got these non-adjacent cells. So we're just practicing using Excel here. I'm going to put my cursor on Y, hold down Control, put my cursor on A B. Let go of Control when you're moving around usually, but I hold down Control so I can select these non-adjacent or not next to each other columns. So I'll select this one, holding down control, this one, holding down control, holding down control. Now notice I messed up because, and if I do that, it's not going to work because now I got the cell in here. So if I try to manipulate this column, they might not all manipulate together. So I got to do it again. I'm going to say, okay, I messed up. Y, hold down control, hold down control. I'm going to select all these middle ones. Boom, boom, boom. And then boom 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 and now when i make them skinny they should all become the same skinny we want them to be the same skinny all right so there we have uh, all of our random numbers so now because these random numbers generate every time i can just sort by whatever the random number is on so the 65 should change if i go from you know a to z so i'm just going to randomly sort these all of these from a to z and they should randomly sort up so i gotta do this 10 times so i think i'm on this one anyone that has that 65 up top so there's that one changed this i think i changed this one <laughs> so i'll randomly sort each one so i'm on au randomly sort randomly sort and randomly sort okay so now now what i want to do is copy just the results and then i'll paste them into a table so i'll have my 10 result columns so i'm going to say all right i'm going to put my cursor on just the x the result i'm going to hold down control select the results holding down control letting go of control as I move to the right so I can hold the control again and select all of the columns letting go of control holding control again and then control C or right click and copy so now I've copied even though they're not all next to each other when I paste them they will be all next to each other so I'm going to put them in A in B E right click and paste and then I don't really need the table formatting, so I'm just going to paste one, two, three, and there, and there we have it. So now we have all of our our data, and I might call this, you know, sample. This will be samp one, tab, samp two, and then Excel will be able to read that even though I have a a label in front of it. So I select those two cells, put my cursor on the fill handle drag it to the right and so now excel can see those i'm going to make this a header i'm going to instead of putting a table in i'm going to go to the home tab font group drop down on the bucket and i, I usually make the the headers black and white black and then the, the labels white if i don't insert a table and then i'm going to go to the centering right there so there we have it and then on this data what i want is it to go down to a uh, hundred so let's do a count here and I'll count this let's make this black white and centered and I'll say this is simply going to be one two and so on I'll select those two put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it down and you can see it, it's predicting the next number down to 100 so we'll bring that on down to a hundred so there we have it right there and then everything beyond that i want to delete the data it's because we just wanted a random sample of 100. so i'm going to copy i'm going to hold control i'm holding shift and selecting these you can do it this way or you can use the keyboard and hold shift and then i'm going to select control shift down arrow and that takes me directly to the bottom number and then I simply want to delete all of that stuff. So now we've got basically a random sample of our population, right? So, so this is just some 
how we can kind of practice with this stuff in Excel. And then if I if I select all of this data, let's just format it like I normally do with the uh, the blue. So I'll select this thing and we'll go to the insert tab, uh, home tab, I mean, font borders and I'll make it blue. All right. And then we'll and then we'll do our we can we can take our average of all of them average and I can take so I can look at each of these samples and see how close you know they line up to the actual so but now and now let's take the average of of all of the of, of the 100 samples that we took it's so the average brackets I'm hitting the up arrow and then I'm holding down control shift and up and now I'm just simply holding shift so I don't pick up the header and down. And so you can see the formula still up top in the formula bar average B E two colon to B E one oh one and enter. So now I can if I double click, there's the formula. If I put my cursor on that, I can put my cursor on the fill handle now, left click and drag that to the right, and it will pick up all of the relative references all the way to the right. Now, because this is my conclusion line, maybe I select this and make it like a different color, like say home tab, font group, drop down. Let's make it blue and white. And then you might put like underlines here. You might put underlines, select in this column, home tab and font group and center. So, so now I can compare this to my, to the actual this is, these are my samples. Now I took 10 samples of 100 this time. Let's compare that to the actual data. So I'm going to hit equals down here again. And I'm going to go back to my, and I'm going to go back to that uh, where I calculated the, the sample. I did it over here somewhere. There it is. So I want to pick up this table. It's in, I put it in cell S. 17 s 17 enter i'm just going to build that table again putting my cursor on this cell fill handle drag it to the right and then i'm going to drag it down i don't need this middle column because nothing's in it and then let's format this by going to the home tab font group bucket blue and border so there's the actual amount for the population. Remember again that in this case, we have the entire population, right? And we're trying to look at our sample to see how close if I was to randomly take a sample, we get to the numbers that we already know from the entire population so that we can so that we can then apply those concepts to times when we don't know the entire population, right? So this is the actual kind of answer in terms of the mean. And we get pretty close, right? We got the the 68 uh, uh, 67 and so on to to that with a with a sample of uh, 100 so now you might want to represent this sample as a column so just to practice our Excel skills here I could then copy this and say I would like to see this in the format of a column as the results of my 10 samples so let's copy that I'm going to go up top and say, let's put that, I'm going to put it over here in BR, BR, right click, and I'm going to paste it just one, two, three, because I just want the values, not the formulas. So, so there, there it is here. And then if I want to take those numbers and flip it, so it's on the vertical, uh, I can put my cursor in BQ, right? Actually, I should have copied it. Let's copy it again. Let's copy those numbers copy those numbers. I'm going to put my cursor in BQ and I'm going to right click special because I want to switch it to be to transpose it. So I want to transpose down here. And now it'll put that vertical. So that's a useful tool to know. So if I then select these, I'm going to delete these don't need these because I got them vertical now. And then again, you can you can kind of see there's there's the average uh, th this is the this is the sample sample average and then this is the actual 
average, let's say, and then the difference. Difference. And let's make this a table, select, or let's make it a, a, a header, home tab, font group. I'm gonna make it black and white. And then I'm gonna go to the alignment and uh, wrap the text and then center it. And then uh, the average, I'm gonna say this equals, and I'm gonna scroll down to that average that I got down below, way down, way down in my table. There's the actual average. And then that's the same all the way down. So I'm just gonna say this equals the same number, equals the one above it. And then if I copy that down, it will always equal the one above it. Putting my cursor on the fill handle, dragging down. So it always equals the one above it. And then the difference, this is gonna be equal to the sample minus the actual. There's our difference which I can put my cursor on the fill handle, drag it down, I can copy and paste it, or I can just double click and that'll take it down. So now you've got some that are over and uh, and some that are, that are under on the average. So remember what we did here, we took, we took samples of a hundred and we could analyze each of these one samples, how close they are to the average but then we took the average of each of these 10 hundred, uh, there's actually 11 of them, 11 samples. And then, uh, and then, and, and so these are the averages of the 11 samples. And now we're comparing those to the actual. And again, we would expect some of the averages to be of, above and below. They're not gonna be exact, even though we took a larger sample from 10 to 100 this time but we would expect that they would approximate closer towards you know a middle a middle point with this kind of spread this type of data so if i select this and let's put our our tools around it. now notice you might also let's insert uh, another column i'm going to insert a column between bp and bq so i'm going to do that to insert an entire column it always inserts to the left so if i select bq the entire column right click on the selected and insert, it will insert a column to the left. Now you gotta be careful of doing that if there's anything below it that's gonna be messed up, but there's nothing below here. So that's the easiest way to kind of move this stuff to the right. So the other way, if there was something below, then if I undo that, uh, hold on a second, it's thinking. If I undo that, if there was something like below here, I can select just these items. I can pull it to the right like this, or I could I could cut, right click and cut, which is more efficient and paste it to the right like that. Or one more time, I could select these cells and then I wanna shift these to the right by right clicking let's it's now i got to get rid of the dancing ants so i'm going to double click select these cells right click and insert and then i can say i want to shift them not down but rather to the right so then i can shift them to the right so a bunch of different ways you can do the same thing which will be useful depending on whether there's data to the bottom or to the right of it for example so then i could say let's take the average of the averages right i could say well i did I took the 100 tests and I got the average for each test. Let's take the average of the averages. And so that gives us the the 6799 which is which is pretty which is like right on basically. You know, we can add more decimals cuz this is all this is actually uh longer decimals than 2. So it's not going to be perfect, but you know, you get you, you get pretty close uh, with that because that's pretty that's a lot that you know that we kind of come. So let's make this font group and brackets and uh, put some borders around this. And then now, of course, if you wanted to, you can also insert histograms from this information. We could make like eleven histograms for each of the data sets of a hundred data points. We could make a histogram as well of the averages of the results, but there's only 11 of them. So that might not be enough data uh, to do that. But you know, if you chose like the entire 
a sample, let's say sample 11 here, and I'm gonna hold down control shift down to the bottom, and then I'm holding down shift to not pick up the total, so that I, and then I scroll up, so I just wanna go down to 101, not 102, and then I'm gonna hold down control backspace, taking me back to the top. I know I'm, little, I'm using a lot of keystrokes here, but I'm just trying to point out that if you have a large set of data, that's gonna be more efficient than, than like scrolling down and then scrolling up. Although you can do either one, even with a hundred data points, it's not too bad to scroll down. But when you get really large data sets, then it's useful to use the keystrokes. So then we can go to the insert and we can go to the charts and insert a histogram. So now you've got a histogram of that last sample. Ah, oh, man, I deleted the, <laughs> of that last sample. So you, you can see it kind of approximates the actual histogram, right? Here's the, act, you could say, here's the actual histogram. And then here's our sample, that last sample uh, of, of 100. So it might be, it, you, let's, let's put uh, the sample of 100. If I did a couple of these, let's say we did number 10, control, sh I'm putting my control shift down, shift up, and then uh, control backspace. And then I'm gonna put this one next to it over here. Insert, charts, histogram, boom. So here's, here's another one of sample 10. So, right, so, and then let's just make one more as you can get an idea. We got a different spreads of the data of 100. Shift down and uh, and uh, shift up and then control backspace. And then I'm gonna scroll to the right, shift to the loo, scroll to the right, and then skip to the loo, and then scroll to the right. That's a song, Skip to the Lou, My Darling. I'm not sure what the Lou, I think that's an instrument, but whatever. Uh, then we're gonna go to the Insert tab, and then Charts, drop down, Histogram, and so here's another histogram, and so you can get an idea of, you know, when I, when I, when I pull these, what's the spread of each of these, of, e of each of these samples, of uh, of a hundred and and notice one of the questions we come to is well how close are to we to the center point that's what we've been looking at and also you know what are, is the characteristic shape of the spread uh, also kind of similar to the actual data set that's another kind of question that we would like to be able to know and it can help us to then also think about how confident we are that like the actual center point and the, and the distance, you know, the distances between them is, 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 uh, is correct, which we'll get into more technically later. But for now, we, we want to just practice using our Excel tools as well to kind of think about how we can create some of these random samples and manipulate uh, uh, some of the data and then and then do our calculations on them.